Good morning. It's September the 26, 2023. It's 10 a.m. and all members of the Hardy County Commissioners Board are present. This meeting is called to order. If everyone will please rise for the invocation. This will be delivered by Commissioner Kirkendall and followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for watching over us and our families. Thank you for all of the first responders. Lord, we pray Psalm 91 over them that, Lord, you would protect those who protect us. Lord, we pray that you'd give us wisdom today as we go about the county's business. Lord, we thank you for another successful fiscal year. We look forward to another one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item 3, approve the minutes of the September 12, 2023 regular meeting presented by the county clerk, Connie Beckham. Second. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 4, consider and possibly approve the following. First is the request to cancel all registered claims from September 12th, and then today's cash statement, as well as the quarterly report for the quarter ending June 30th, 2023. All of this will be presented by the county treasurer. Good morning, Mrs. McWhee. Good morning. I'm asking the court to release me of the liability of $2,566,061.25. On our cash report summary and general checking account, we have $2,593,307.85. In our first financial bank general checking special money market, we have $12,109,876.99. In text pool, $330,875.10 for a total in cash funds of $15,034,059.94. On our quarterly report for the quarter ending June 30th, 2023, in general checking, we had $4,114,482.91. In First Financial Bank, general checking special money market zero. In text pool, $15,241,764.27 for a total in cash funds of $19,356,000. $247.18. That's a decrease in the cash balance for the second quarter of 2023 and the amount of $3,491,140.31. Other funds invested in text pool with the ARPA 2021 funds with a cash balance of $8,844,512.17. And at that time, our first financial bank special money market had zero. So the total on that was $8,844,512.77. Move to approve this report. Second. Yeah, motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And while Mrs. McWilliams is up here so she doesn't have to sit down and get back up, okay. if it's okay with the rest of the members, let's skip to number seven, uh, eight. <coughs> Discussion and possible action regarding annual review and approval of the Hardin County Investment Policy requested by the County Treasurer, Mrs. McWilliams. Is there anything new this year? Nothing new. There's no changes unless the court knows of anything that we need to change. Move to approve. Second. A motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And then number nine, consider adoption of resolution 27-23, reappointing Deborah McWilliams as the Hardin County Investment Officer, pursuant to the Hardin County Investment Policy. Second. A motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very Thank much. Going to go back to number five. Authorization to pay county bills as presented by the county auditor. Good morning, Mrs. Gore. Good morning. The pre-approved expenditures for September the 13th through the 14th is $605,944.02. 
monthly accrued expenditures for September the 20th through the 21st is $588,823.78. Expenditures for Commissioner's Court today are $477,139.14. The list of additional bills is our health, dental, and life insurance invoice for $331,063.38. For total expenditures and transfers of $2,902,970.32. Gross payroll for September the 21st was $567,051.45 for a total transfer for that payroll of $984,544.34. Move pay bill. Second. Motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Gore. Thank you. Item six, present presentation of office and departmental reports by elected officials and department heads. The human resources director informed me that she has a report to present, so come on up, Ms. Johnson. Well, this is more of an announcement than a report, okay. but um, we will begin open enrollment October the, or the week of October the 9th. The 9th is a holiday. It's Columbus Day, so we will begin the 10th through the 13th, Brittany and I are working on a schedule. I will be getting with the commissioners about seeing, um, coming to your offices and meeting with your employees like we did last year. Same with the Sheriff's Department. Also, this is the last week for anybody to file their um, annual wellness exam. So that way they can earn their PTO day. An email was sent out last week, but if anybody doesn't have an email in their employees, then just let them know. So they have till Friday? Uh, well, actually Saturday, but okay. And then if, uh, if anybody's out that week of the uh, 10th during open enrollment, how do you handle that? Um, they can just contact our office. Before or after? Um, I prefer after. Get back? Okay. When we get back, just contact you and we'll take care of them. Correct. And I probably will need to visit with most employees because we are changing our vision insurance plan and moving to Blue Cross Blue Shield. So those that form will have to be signed to make that transition. I know we get uh, an annual uh, eye exam through our current. So when we switch over, does that date start on December 1st? It does. Okay. So if but somebody is waiting until March, they could go ahead and get it a little early, like me. They can. That's fine. And if you have not got your exam yet through David's Vision, go ahead and do it before um, November the 30th. Okay. I mean, you don't have to go back to back or get compared to last year. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Any questions regarding the information? Is that it? Um, also, anybody that's earned Boomer Book. Uh, any of the employees that participated in Sonic Boom, you can only use those um, until December the 30th. Okay. So make sure that your employees know to send those as well and they will expire. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other elected official or department head that would like to provide a report on their department? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven. Consider and possibly approve the appointment of Ms. Lacey Guidry, FMP-C, as a trustee to serve on the Spindletop Center Board of Directors. This is a new seat designated for rural counties to fill in rotation, and this term will expire on September 26, 2025. Ms. Guidry is a nurse practitioner in Sour Lake, and uh, as you can see with the request that was made by Ms. Burrell, the Chief Executive Officer of Spindletop Center, they were looking for us to fill that seat with a um, health professional or a financial person. And so uh, Ms. Guidry fits the, the bill for that and uh, Ms. Burrell has uh, looked at her bio and, and said that she thinks that she'd do a great job and I agree I agree with that. So much. Second. That motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion <clears throat> passes. Item 10, consider and possibly adopt Hardin County Uniform Tax Abatement Policy effective for two years pursuant to Texas Tax Code Section 312.002C. Uh, this is just a renewal. There was no changes that were made. Is that correct? Yes. We're just renewing it. It has to be renewed every two years. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 11, consider a request by Ms. Shirley Cook, tax assessor collector, to authorize the county judge to execute software license agreement with Capital Appraiser Group, LLC, for computer software in the tax office. This will be effective January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay. A motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? 
Is this the same software that you've been using? This is the only software that the Board of County Tax Office has ever had. So they have changed uh, ownership, but it's still Capital Appraisal Group. Um, there was an increase, but we covered that in our new budget. So. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Item 12, consider request by Commissioner Amanda Young and Sharon Whitley, Health Services Director, to authorize the county judge to execute real property commercial lease agreement between Hardin County Precinct 3 and Hardin County Health Department, which for lease office space located at 615 Highway 105 West, Sour Lake, Texas, for the purpose of performing which services one day a month at this location. Commissioner Young, I know you and uh, Ms. Whitley and also Ms. Uh, Jones, y'all been working on this for a while and y'all got it narrowed down and the city has no issue with this, is that right? Correct. Uh, yeah. We have it in writing that they're okay with it, so we're going to use it for one day a month. Perfect. We got a motion? Yes. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 13, consider approval of request by Mr. Del Wilson, Hawthorne Field County Airport FBO, to apply for the TxDOT Aviation Routine Airport Maintenance Program, also called RAMP, Cost Share Grant for fiscal year 24. Mr. Cooper? Yes, sir. Are you aware of this? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Anything you want to say about it? No. Mr. Uh, Wilson stayed on top of this pretty well, and uh, he's run this by me, so I would move that we accept it. Second. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Williford, for bringing this back up to us. <laughs> and for everything you do out there. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 14, consider request by Aaron Tuffer, Emergency Management Coordinator, to authorize the county judge to renew a memorandum of understanding with Southeast Texas Regional Planning Commission. For the 25% match amount for the fiscal year 23 port security grant, which funds the Southeast Texas Alerting Network. Matching funds are based on population, which will not exceed $8,012.31. And local advertisement by industry partners are used as in-kind match, which typically covers the entire amount of this local match. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? <coughs> Mr. Tupper, uh, I've got a text this morning that that's being uh, Everybody needs to re-register by the end of this week? Yes, sir. Uh, they're switching to a new platform, and uh, all the citizens will need to re-register. Uh, they're not able to bring over the old data to the new platform uh, for several reasons. One was it was it was uh, had a lot of errors in it. Uh, so when you were think you were sending out information to people, you, you were not getting the information to them. So... We're basically going to start over and, and uh, with a new database and build it from scratch. So uh, all citizens uh, that, that want to receive alerts uh, from the county judge or the <coughs> court whenever we have any incidents, uh, definitely go to dstand.com and uh, sign up. Thank you. Any questions about that? Thank you, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 15, consider and possibly approve request. I said approve, but I meant approve. Request from Commissioner Ernie Cook, Precinct 4, to accept a $207 donation from the Hardin County Youth Soccer Club for additional water usage for the months of July and August at the Hardin mm -hmm. County Veterans Memorial Park. If approved, amend the fiscal year 23 budget by increasing the revenue line item 010 367100 soccer league donation in the amount of $207 and increase the industry. Expenditure line item 01066034, supplies Lumberton, in the amount of $207. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Cook, I'm sorry, Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Number 16, consider approval of request by Commissioner Cook to enter into an agreement with the Hardin County Youth Soccer Club, whereby Hardin County Youth Soccer Club will contribute or reimburse $1,800 to Hardin County for the use of the Hardin County Veterans Memorial Park concession stand, soccer field, normal utilities, and supplies. If approved, this agreement will be in effect from October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024. 
Commissioner Cook, I think that this is a, uh, an agreement that's always been in place, but it, I don't know that it's ever been documented, so you wanted to get that in writing. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's been in place, I think, since the early 2000s. Second. If not before. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Cook, is that right? Yes. And a second by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Number 17, consider and possibly authorize application for FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, Severe Winter Storm BR-4705. If approved, consider and possibly authorize the purchasing agent to solicit proposals for grant administrator and qualification statements for engineering services for FEMA HMGP. I know that there's two uh, projects that I asked Mr. Tucker to look into for this program, <coughs> and I think they're eligible. Uh, we'll make sure of that. But it's the uh, replacement of the generator here at the courthouse and the jail. We had some issues with the uh, courthouse generator here just about two months ago. And when they were here, they told us that both of those generators probably had about a three-year expectancy that we need to look at replacing them. And as the way these grants go, it may take five years to uh, get the money to do that. So I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Young. You wanted to see about appointing the committee to review these? Yes, sir. All right. Who would you like to name to that committee? Commissioner Young. All right, Commissioner Kirkendall, are you okay with adding that to your motion? Yes, sir, as amended. All right, and Commissioner Young, you still second that motion? Yes, sir. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Commissioner Cooper. Uh, Judge, I don't know if you or Harry, either one might know. I know on these federal grants, we always have to have a grant administrator. And, uh, is there ever a situation where our grant administ our local grant administrator could be on this instead of us paying all this money to these other people? So. Yes, sir. Uh, he, he, we do local grants in house. So any of the local state grants, like e grants and criminal justice and stuff like that, he's doing those now. Uh, as far as uh, this one here, uh, possibly. I'm not trying to put any, any extra work on, on Clay or anything. It's, I'll use uh, that bridge project in uh, Manda's uh, precinct. <laughs> Those people are making money off of uh, us or off the team or whoever has that grant. And they're still getting paid and that job's not being done. You know what Do I'm we saying? Have I'm an administrator for that when we're That's administrating that and have slaves administrating that. But the engineers. Engineers. I take yeah. that back to engineers. Okay. Yeah. So it, well, I know what you're saying. You're, you're right. When we don't have to have one. I should. assume all these federal grants require us to have an outside grant administrator. Is that correct? Or? So they do not require. We can we can do it in-house now. Uh, you just got to make sure that all the guidelines are followed to a T or else they de-obligate your funds. That's where a grant administrator comes in and has insurance. Uh, and basically if we're de-obligated, we can turn around and get our money back from right. them, hiring them. If we do it all in-house, we would just be de-obligated and, and not have those funds. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other uh, discussion regarding this item? All, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 18, consider request by Misty Sims, purchasing agent, to authorize the county judge to execute fee agreement with Lark Group Incorporated for demolition services related to the community development block grant for disaster recovery. Second. Second. And motion by Commissioner Young, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 19, consider and possibly authorize the purchasing agent to sell a coal generator, <laughs> serial number 2311454, located at the Old County Hospital and Annex Building, utilizing Renee Bates Auctioneers at ReneeBates.com. So moved. Second. That motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I can't believe no one asked if we could put that generator over here at the courthouse. I thought it, but I didn't ask. I think it's older. <laughs> we tried that at that <coughs> new annex project. Right, we were going to move it over there. And it wouldn't. We were recommended not to do that. Item 20, discussion and possible action for Road and Bridge Precinct 3 to accept a $10,000 donation from the town of Rose Hill Acres for maintenance on roadside ditches. If approved, amend the fiscal year 23 budget by creating revenue line item 01736703, RMB3 donations, and increase line item 
623-330, fuel and oil by $10,000. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cook. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I don't know how you got that done, but that's a good deal. Item 21, consider adoption of resolution 28-23 proclaiming October 2023 as National Domestic Violence <coughs> Awareness Month, requested by Jennifer Walters, Hardin County Crime Victims Assistance Center Interim Director. This is a resolution that we do annually. And um, Jennifer, I know you have some activities coming up um, here at the courthouse. Do you want to talk about any of those? program where we display the red silhouettes of women that have died at the acts of domestic violence in Hardin County. We're planning on displaying those at local high schools for the first week, uh, first and second week of October. And then for the third week, we'll display them at our local police departments. And then at the end of the month, on the 30th, we'll have a small ceremony here at the courthouse where we will release some balloons in honor of all those victims. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Young. Any discussion? Anything else you want to add? Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 23, discussion only by any county official of any item not on the agenda without taking any action. Is there anyone present that has any discussion items they want to bring up? Any member of the court? Judge, I'd like to see us uh, at some point. Uh, consider, I know we've talked about it uh, off and on, but uh, having a county engineer to where we can add Jeff Levin's group lead to be our county engineer. I don't know if we would need to still use LJA, uh, but with their leadership changes, I feel more comfortable with lead. And so everybody gets a good look at it. Who's he with? He has, he has his own company now. He, he was with Whiteley and then he bought it. On the engineering side, they still have the survey and stuff. I, I suppose this is an annual contract. Well, honestly, I think the last time we took any action on this, uh, she was still the floodplain administrator. Mm -hmm. So, uh, really, it's just a change that would be made if the four of y'all decide you want to make that change. Uh, I think that we would still need at least a second um, because Jeff and his group do subdivisions. And yeah. so we would need somebody that Anytime would there was a conflict, we would need a second uh, engineer. Mm -hmm. So, Misty, is this a, do we need to go out for? RFPs, or since they're a uh, professional service, can we just uh, negotiate pricing with them? And then, if the court decides that that's who they want to pick as their lead engineer, they can do so. And we've always sold to arbitration sessions. All right. So if y'all get ready to do that, just let her know, and she can put it on the agenda. Amanda, do you want to do that since you sure. were involved last night? Mm -hmm. Could we do it? Uh, we could put it on the next agenda. I just know Commissioner Cooper wouldn't be here to vote on going out for qualification statements, but if you're, if that's something you're okay with, we can do it on that, yes, that meeting or we can wait for the next one. That's fine with me. All right, so Misty, if you'll get to work on that. Thank you. Everybody's in agreement with putting that on the next agenda? Yes. Okay. Any other item for discussion? <coughs> All right, if not, we'll move on to number 23. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are done. Clay, yeah. don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 